Hey, this is Eric with Web App Reviews, where we highlight the best Chrome web apps and extensions for education. Today, we're taking a look at a web app called Powtoon EDU. Now, you can find this as usual in the Chrome Web Store, or you can use the short URL tiny.cc slash Powtoon EDU, and that'll bring you right here where you can install this great app. Now, Powtoon is a free web app that lets you create presentations and animated videos and often has a cartoon look or a feel to them. Now, we're going to take a look at how to do this, but first we'll go backwards today and I'm going to start by showing you an end result, show you what you can make with this, and then we'll take a look at how you can do that. So for the example I'm going to show you here, I'm going to pretend that I'm a science teacher and what I want the kids to do is pick a vocabulary term or a concept from our current unit and do a short little uh, cartoon that explains that topic or that vocabulary word. So I chose osmosis for uh, my vocabulary term and I went ahead and used Powtoon to create this quick little video here. So take a look. All right, well, there it is. And uh, that was a pretty neat little video. And honestly, it really was not that difficult to put that together. So let's take a look at how to do that. So we'll say I've already got this installed, which I do. So we'll just pop open to a new tab there. And there we go. There's my Powtoon EDU app. We'll go ahead and launch that. And basically what it's going to do is take me to the Powtoon website. Now, the very first time you do this, you do have to sign in, but you don't have to create an account just for Powtoon. The very first time you go, you'll click sign in and there'll be an option there to sign in with your Google account. So if you've already got a Google um, Apps for Ed account or a Gmail account, no problem at all. You can just click there. It'll ask you for some, some permissions, say yes, and you will be good to go from there. So once you are in, basically what you can do is either open your existing um, Powtoons you've made or you can click the start button to create a new one show you how that works what you get to do then is you can pick different types of templates so if you don't want to start with just you know a blank slate you can say I want to do a presentation or a promotional video or a greeting card or an infographic or social clip and then within those you're going to have variations as well for our example though today I'm just going to go with a blank project because that would be uh, the easiest one to show you all of the different options there and so you can then go in and title that and uh, get started on that. Now I've already got this pulled up there. There it is right there. And I want to show you how that works once you've gone ahead and created your Powtoon. Well, if you've used any sort of multimedia software like PowerPoint or Google Slides, this should look very familiar. For the most part, it really functions very much like those. Down the left hand side, you've got your slides and you can add slides and copy slides and delete slides and drag them around. And then um, here is your main slide area and you can put things on that slide area to uh, create your slides. Now where Powtoon gets really interesting is the content that they provide for you. So over here on the right hand side, you have lots and lots of content that you can pull out and put onto your slides. And that includes really neat text effects, 
image holders, characters, and if you hit more here, you'll see there's a whole lot more than what you see at first, as well as animated characters, which is really neat, and then tons and tons of props, markers, shapes, and lots of different backgrounds. You can have kind of any feel that you want there for it. Now, in addition to the um, items you see here, you can also switch between different styles. That's the Picto style. I could switch over to the paper cut style, which gives you a little bit of a different look and feel. Or I could go over to the marker style, which sort of looks like you're uh, drawing on a whiteboard. And you'll notice that the backgrounds change as well. So I can leave at that background, or I could switch over to something that's like a whiteboard. So you can match the backgrounds with the characters. And there are quite a few more styles beyond just that. Well, for our example here, why don't we just go with the paper cut style? That's fine. And we'll just pick a nice simple background. All right, so now what we want to do is start grabbing some of these items and dragging them out here onto our slide. So we'll just grab a few things. We'll grab our animated Happy Dad. We'll put him out there. And of course, you can move them around and resize them, do whatever you need to once you get them out there. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we'll grab a prop. We'll put a, a light bulb. Maybe he's got a, a good idea. We'll throw that up there. Maybe uh, make it a little bigger. Maybe we'll rotate that around a bit for him there. And then we'll throw some text in as well. Why don't we go ahead and we'll just go with this sort of text. And if we come in here and click to edit that, we can now go ahead and put in our text. And of course, I can change font and font size and all sorts of things like that. But we'll just go ahead and accept that as it is. Very good. And there we go. We've got all these different items on our slide. Well, in addition to that, you can bring in items of your own. So there's loads and loads that you can use from here. But if you look in the top menu bar, you'll also see there's an import option. So I could come in here and import an image, whether it's one I'm uploading from my computer or if it's one that I've linked in from the web, that would work as well. And you can also import in music or sound if you want to have some narration or a soundtrack going behind there. Well, after you've got your things on your slide, you can also control things such as when they appear on the slide and what transitions they have and so forth. So you'll notice down here at the bottom, I have a timeline that currently is showing this slide is lasting 10 seconds. You can decrease or increase however long you want that slide to last for. And then below the timeline, you see little icons for each of the things I put on there. So if I go ahead and click on the little man there, I have lots of options of things I can do with him. For example, I've got a little flip button over here that I can flip him back and forth if I prefer him to face one direction or the other. And then because I clicked on him, you can see on the timeline when he enters and when he exits. So he's entering at two seconds. Well, I could have him enter at one second if I want, and I could have him exit sooner if I wanted. But I can also change how he enters or exits. And so you've got these little buttons here that are the transitions. If I give a click on that, you'll see right now he's coming in toward the right, which is fine, but he could come in from the left or he could come uh, down from the top of the screen. I think coming in from the right is fine. Uh, but another option you have here is whether or not he just comes in from the right or if a hand moves him in. We'll go ahead and choose the hand option for that one. And again, we'll let him come in from the right. Um, and then I could choose other things like the light bulb, maybe let it come in at two seconds. We'll let it come down and we'll let it come with the, the hand option as well. And then we've also got our text and we'll just have that come in at three seconds. And so you can easily make all these sort of changes there. And then when you wanna watch and see what it looks like, you can just use our play button here. And here comes the hand bringing them in and the light bulb down and there comes our text in there as well. So very, very easy to put things on the slide and then make changes to them as needed. And of course you can make as many slides as you need to make. Um, the next thing to be thinking about is how you want people to be able to view this. And there are two modes you can switch between. Up here in the top left hand corner, you'll see I'm in movie mode right now. And what that means is if I leave it like this, which is perfectly fine, when it plays the presentation, it'll play it straight through without any stops. It'll follow all of the transitions and all of the things I put in there. 
but I do have the option of switching over by clicking up here in the top left to presentation mode. Now if I do that, you'll notice that way down in the bottom right, I got one new little button here, which is a hold button. What this allows me to do is I can click and I can drop on here different spots where I want the presentation to pause. And so it'll stop there, which would allow me to then talk if I was doing this as a live presentation, and then I could hit play and it could start up again. So you can either be in presentation mode or movie mode, depending upon how you want that to be. And again, just click up here on the top left to switch between those two modes. Okay, now we're saying that you're all done with your presentation and you want to go ahead and share this with others. In the top right hand corner, you see a spot where you can click preview and that will take you to the live view of the presentation. Now I've already got that pulled up and over here is the web page for that specific Powtoon that I had created, test 0001. And so I could come in here and click play to play that. What you want to notice is that each Powtoon is given a unique web address. And so I could come up here at the top and copy that web address. And that's what I could send out to people for them to be able to see my Powtoon. Now, if I'm on my main Powtoon's web page where we first signed in, you'll see I can get to that link here as well. Right next to my Powtoon is the play button. But if I click on that, I can copy that. That, uh, and that's the same address that will get me to there. Another option is under actions to the right of there. If I click on there, I can get to play there as well, but I can also choose get embed code. And what that'll do is it'll give me an option to choose what size I want this to be. And then I can of course copy and paste that embed code into my own website. If instead of just linking to it, I'd like to put it on my Google site or on my blogger site or something like that. Now you will notice there are other options such as downloading um, or excuse me, uploading to YouTube or uh, downloading the video yourself. The thing is, this is the free version of Powtoon, so there are some limitations. Not all of these features will work in the free version. So here's how that works. With the free version, you are limited to five minutes per presentation, which is probably plenty of time for most student uh, projects. Now, you can make as many presentations as you wish, and of course, you can embed them and share them online. So there's no limit to that. However, there are paid options. I'll go ahead and bring that page up for you here. You'll see there are paid options if you want that will allow you to have longer videos or to be able to download them to your computer or to be able to upload them to YouTube. So there are other options if you need those. In addition, uh, Powtoon does have a nice set of video tutorials on their website. So if you'd like to learn more than we can show in this brief video, there's a lot of great things that you can learn there. Well, all in all, it's a really nice web app, and I could see a lot of ways this could be used in school. Uh, students could use it to act out a section from a story that they're reading in class, or maybe come up with their own alternate ending to how the story should have gone. Or they could reenact a historical event, or maybe make a pretend meeting and a conversation between famous people from history. Or like we did earlier, they can make a short comic to explain a vocabulary word from class or some concept that's being covered. Or basically, you could just use this as a fun and easy alternative to PowerPoint or Google Slides for any sort of presentation that your students or you need to make. Well, hopefully you'll try that out and to learn more about other great Chrome web apps and extensions, be sure to visit webappreviews.org where you can see all of our reviews as well as submit your favorite apps and extensions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.